Hi, uh, today I wanted to cover off uh, tape drives, uh, backups and archives again. Um, in the past uh, we did it with a, a SAS connected external um, SAS drive. Um, this time we're doing something a little bit different and we're using a USB one instead. Um, so the hardware I'm using today will be a, a TVS-H1288X NAS. Um, I think it's the same one I used for the SAS video, but this time I haven't had to use one of the PCI Express slots on the back of the NAS uh, for a SAS card to get the external connections for the enclosure that holds the LTO drive. Um, this time I'm using a, a device from a company called Unitex, uh, the LT90H. It's connected with USB 3 to the NAS on one of the uh, rear USB ports. Um, inside it, uh, we've got an LTO 9 drive. Um, I think that supports up to 45 terabytes of tape. We'll go into that in a bit more detail. Um, and this is what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be connecting it onto a freshly installed NAS. I haven't added any backup software. Um, the software I'm going to use today is called Archieware. I'm going to use their P5 product. Um, so Archieware, um, company that's they can do backup, synchronize, archive, lots of options. I'll give you an overview of their software in a moment. Um, so the freshly installed NAS doesn't have anything on it except a little bit of data. I put some pictures in there just to do a backup job for you. Um, first, let's talk a little bit about the tape drive and where you can get it if you want to uh, use it for the for your own purposes. Um, so here we've got um, the company called Unitex. Uh, they're a supplier. Um, for the UK, for the Unitex device, would be a company called Cash Media. Um, so if you're looking for us in the UK and Ireland, we've got Cash Media as an option. If you need it um, outside of those locations, you can um, go to Unitex's website. They'll tell you where they, they sell it in different parts of the world. Uh, but Cash Media very uh, generously gave me the sample I'm using today for the demo. Um, so we'll go through a little bit about them. They're very good at support, uh, pre and post sales. If you need any help, they're very good. Um, fast delivery. Um, I, I think this is maybe exceptional. I got mine same day of requesting it, but uh, I think generally on ordering it would be a bit longer than that. Um, really good relationship with them with us. Um, so why would you use it? Um, so you, it connects over USB to really anything. Um, we're connecting it to an as in this case, but you can connect it to servers, laptops, PCs, anything that you want. Um, the Unitex one is the only one that lets you use LTO devices with USB. So if you don't want to have to waste one of the PCI Express slots for a SAS card, this is the only option you can use to have an external enclosure for LTO. Um, and as I said earlier, LTO 9 offers up to 45 terabytes of compressed storage capacity on the tape. Um, really good for longevity. Um, you can have 30 plus years of life if they're stored correctly, um, much longer than on a hard disk. So if you really have some data that you may not need to access as often, but you need to keep it, um, then you can use the, the, the tape drives for that. So again, we're using the um, uh, the, the Unitex USB enclosure for the LTO9 tape um, and it was supplied by Cash Media. Um, so here is the uh, main setup of the NAS. So in the App Center, the first thing we need to do is add in um, AccuWare P5. Um, now you can come here to the uh, uh, backup and sync option of the App Center and over here we can see we've got um, AccuWare P5 um, 7.1.1. Um, now, that might not be the latest version. If we click into it, we can see that this has been there since uh, January. So what I always do is I always go across to the, uh, the AccuWare website. I'll come up to the menu and there's a black download button there. Now, when you go on here, have a look at what the version says. So they're saying that they've actually got up to version 7.1.6 now. So what I'll do is I'll actually grab the copy from here um, rather than go um, straight to the App Center. Um, so if you scroll down a little bit, um, you'll see that there is one uh, dedicated for QNAP there. So you can go down here, whether it's an upgrade or a new install, and it'll download our Q package that lets you install it onto the NAS. So I've already downloaded that file. It's not very big at all. Um, if you want to install um, a file that you already have um, on a QNAP, there's a little plus symbol at the top of uh, every screen within the App Center, and um, that's for installing manually. So I'm going to click that. I'm going to click Browse. I'm going to look at my computer. I've got a folder there called uh, AccuWare, and there's the Q package that we've got, only 57.6 meg. Click Open and click Install. So it's just going to go and install that uh, application on the QNAP, um, and then I'll be able to open it, log in, um, use it, uh, discover the tape drive that's connected, things like that. So this is a, a really easy way to, to get it done. Um, and I'm going to be on the much later version than is available in the App Center. 
I think the App Center version only gets updated a couple of times a year, so um, they're much more proactive at doing updates on their own website. So this is a good way to get the very latest version of the software. Um, and just like that, it's it's already installed. We've got uh, AccuWebP5 there on the uh, the desktop. Um, so what I'm going to do is just click that. It's going to open up a uh, a new window here that's going to let me log in. So I'll just accept that. Continue. Now, the default username and password is not the same for the NAS. It's actually admin and admin. It's going to moan at you that you've got the default password, which is good. You should change it. Um, so please change the default password. You should definitely do that. For the demo, I'm not going to. Um, but first of all, it will want you to enter in um, some license information. So you can go down there and get a trial license if you want. Um, I do already have one of those. So I'm just going to go add manually um, and add in all the data here for the serial number. Um, so we might blur this bit out. So just let me type that in. Change the product. It's the one I have. Expiry 1st of Jan. And I'm going to just type in the license key. Okay, so that's the license key all done. So that's all entered in. Um, now I've got a version of um, AccuWare that I can actually use and play with. Uh, so one of the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go across to the uh, archive section. Um, going to have a look at the storage manager and I'm going to go to tape drives. So by default, there's no tape drives there, nothing to be seen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click new tape drive. I'm going to let it auto detect standalone drives. That's fine by me. Click next. It's going to scan for the drives and it's found it right there. Um, so the only thing I did is I connected the tape drive uh, to its own power source. Um, I connected the USB cable to one of the USB ports on the back of the NAS um, and I inserted a tape. That's all I've done um, to the tape drive. So I'm going to click next. Um, I can uh, label it if I want to. So I could say call this the uh, Unitex drive type. Lots of choices. It's auto detected LT09, which is what I've got. So I'm happy with that and I'm going to click install. Um, so it can prepare the media, so label it for what you want. I'll say, let's label it for archive, because uh, that's what I'll do in this demo here. So we'll click label. Um, so that's now set that up. It's now detected it. Um, so now it's all connected, ready to go. I'm able to uh, use this drive for, for anything that I want. So I can go through and now create um, 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 pools uh, for the archive, lots of different options. So we're just going to... Uh, let that uh, all mount up and get it ready uh, and then we'll go through and we'll we'll do the rest of it So now we're just waiting for that um, that tape to finish labeling there So it says operation is writing we can monitor that by going to the job monitor um, So that'll pull out there. So it says it's creating a new label um, So we'll just wait for that to finish Okay, so we can see that the uh, the job has finished for, for labeling the uh, the tape there. Um, so for anybody unfamiliar with LTO9, it can take a while to do the very first um, labeling of a drive. It has to be calibrated. Um, so that took about 48 minutes, so that's fine. So we'll just click close on that one. Um, now we need to create a, an archive plan. Uh, so here I'm going to go new. I'm going to call it um, I don't know, Animal Picks um, because that's what I'm going to be uh, um, Back it up, just pictures of some animals that I've put on there. So that's fine. You can choose specifically who's allowed to access it if you want to. There's an admin user. I'm just going to leave it empty because then all groups are authorized. So I'll just apply that. Um, I'm not really going to change anything else except um, previews. Um, so as I'm doing pictures, I want to be able to add um, a, a thumbnail uh, generator effectively. So here I'm going to go um, image pick. Click apply. So that's now been added. Uh, so Image Magic is now running um, for this um, um, archive plan that I'm creating. So that any um, pictures that are uh, um, archived in this plan, um, they're going to have thumbnails generated. So that's fine. I'm not going to change anything else. We'll close that. Uh, we'll go up to the manual archiving option now. And now we're going to pick what exactly we're going to back up. So I've got the pictures share. I'm going to click that. And I've got a folder there. Uh, called animals. So I'm going to say um, add to archive selection. So that's fine. I'm going to click 
archive now. Um, archive plan, I'm going to put it on the animal pics archive plan that I created and I'm going to say start. So I've got start now ticked rather than a start time of 11 so I'm going to click start and we can immediately go to the monitor. Um, so here in the monitor we can see that it's now um, positioning the tape um, so it's going to found the volume and now it's going to start backing up. It's about 600 megabytes, nothing too huge. Um, but after it's finished that, it's also going to go through uh, and generate the thumbnails for everything, uh, which we'll be able to look at in the restore section in a moment. So we'll just let this continue. There we go. So it's already done the copy. So now it's generating previews for the 427 files. Um, so that didn't take long at all. So we'll let that run through and create those. And then we'll click the uh, the restore option um, at the top of uh, AccuWare P5 here. And uh, in the restore option, we'll be able to look at the job we've, we've done and we'll be able to browse through all the thumbnails that it's now generating. Okay, so that has now gone down to finish jobs as well. So that's all complete. Um, so now if we were to click on the restore option, uh, we're gonna browse the archive because that's what we did going to look at the default archive and we can see we've got one there um, got the one in share so we'll go through and we'll find the pictures folder there's animals um, so depending on which one you click on um, there is a gallery option at the top if you select gallery uh, when you go inside a folder it shows you a preview so these are what were generated as part of the archive plan there and um, because we added in the uh, the image magics function so that's able to see those so I can go back and look at any folder um, so we goldfish ones so lots of goldfish ones so yeah depending on what you click you get to see one and um, it also does it for video and um, there's um, another one that you could add there called ffmpeg uh, that would uh, generate previews for video files as well so you're able to not just see the folder structure of what you've archived you can also see previews of them as well um, so that's really everything that's the um, tape drive um, all mounted up um, all connected um, pretty simple stuff uh, tape drive auto detects just fine uh, one thing I will say is there's no way to see the tape drive within um, our QUTS Hero operating system. It's not visible anywhere in there. Um, it is all done within the uh, the AccuWare P5 software. So that's where you'd be uh, able to go through and, and mount the tape, auto-detect the tape, things like that. All you've got to do is have it connected to the NAS with USB. Nothing to click on the NAS to make it ready. Uh, for AccuWare P5. It's all done completely automatically for you. Um, so yeah, um, if anybody has any questions on how this works, um, do let me know. Um, again, this is the um, uh, Uni Unitex um, uh, drive that we were using here. I think it was the LT90H. Uh, so it's an LT09 tape. And uh, uh, very much uh, thank you to Cash Media for, for lending us the device so that we could make the video. Um, and again, this is uh, AccuWare P5, which enables us to um, be able to mount the tapes and use them um, directly within the NAS. So it just runs as a separate little web portal here on the NAS. All very simple, very easy to use. Um, so yeah, really, really good solution um, if you need to archive or back up to tape. Um, so yeah, any questions, let us know in the comments section down below and uh, we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks a lot.